So I'm going to put everything back together, put the printer back together, turn it back on, and we will go through the menus and print some demo pages. All right, now we're put back together and running. So let's check out the menu settings. The printer, of course, gives you full control over all of the print settings and settings to do with how the printer processes print jobs and stuff like that. Everything uh, that you'd find on on a modern printer today in software with modern printers now they don't have their own hardware user interface you do everything in windows or whatever but these older laser jets they give you full control now the controls you set on these printers can be overridden by software as a matter of fact by default it is and that's how HP meant for it to be but if you ever have these connected to something that doesn't have a driver that supports controlling the printer through software then uh, you can do everything right here. So to access the menu settings you first have to bring the printer on uh, offline. And then the first menu is the printing menu and within that our first item is how many copies do you want the printer to print. And you can set this really ridiculously high uh, up to a thousand copies you can set this thing to do. So I guess if on on your machine you uh, you print out a page without specifying the number of copies this thing will just print out whatever you said here up to a thousand which is absolutely ridiculous I don't think this printer would even be built uh, is even you know suitable for printing a thousand copies uh, of one document I think that would be something more suited to the uh, to the 4SI there Notice a little asterisk there, that means that's what's currently set. And to if you change a setting to, uh, to confirm it, you press enter. But I'll just get out of it and it doesn't change anything. The paper size, letter, legal, or A4, or executive, and there's some envelope settings here as well. Quite a lot. Next item, orientation, portrait or landscape. Manual feed by default if you uh, if you want to use the multi-purpose tray by default instead of the cassette. And RET. RET means Resolution Enhancement Technology. And basically it's kind of like anti-aliasing. The printer, you know, takes the image sent to it and does its own hardware anti-aliasing. It's got three, uh, four settings. Uh, light, medium, dark, or off and if you choose anything other than off it's not a subjective thing what you're supposed to do is you actually print a test page with all three settings light medium and dark and the test page has a little image on it that serves as a RET test and what you do is you look at the test image for all three settings and you set RET to which one looks the best I will go into that when we print a test page later I have already found that the default setting, which is medium, uh, is the best on this particular machine. And that's it for the printing menu. So we press menu and we get to the PCL menu, PCL settings. First, our font source, either the built-in fonts or the cartridge. I have no cartridge installed, so it doesn't give me any other option but internal. The font number, so later when we print out a font listing page, two pages actually, because there's a lot of fonts, each font example will have a number and that's the number you set to set what font you want to use. Pitch, the size of the font, if you you know if you sent a print job uh, to the machine that doesn't have its own defined font so the machine can not only use its own built-in font but you can choose the size as well which is pretty nice. The symbol set I guess you know what set of uh, characters. Ooh. Uh, P. P. S. Uh, Windows 3.0. That's interesting. That setting right there, P. S. Text. Um, I'm not sure, but I would guess that is PostScript, and you only get this option if you have PostScript installed. And that's the PCL menu. Next is the PostScript menu, and you only get this menu if you have a PostScript module installed. And there's only one setting, whether or not to print PostScript errors. If the printer can't process something, that will print a message on the page. Next is the Job menu. Page Protect. 
basically what this setting is for is sometimes if you send a really complex print job to the printer has a lot of images and stuff the job the computer will be sending the job to the printer faster than the printer can actually process it and when that happens you'll get either a page overrun error or a page too complex error so what page protect does the, the default settings off if you get either of those errors you can turn it on for the specific size of uh, paper you're using and what it does is it allocates extra memory to the print job so you know normally when the computer sends a print job to the printer the printer allocates a specific amount of memory for it and if the print job happens to be larger than that memory allocation the printer will just begin printing the page and as the stuff in memory starts to get printed it'll start moving the new stuff sent from the computer into memory what's happening is sometimes if you have a really complex print job you're using up all that memory faster than the printer can flush it out and get it onto paper so what page protect does is it allocates a larger amount of memory to the print job now naturally to use this setting you need uh, enough memory so if you don't have a lot of memory installed sometimes you'll turn on this setting if uh, if you're trying to cure a page overrun error well now instead of a page overrun error you get a insufficient memory error and after that you're screwed you either got to add more memory or simplify your print job but uh... this thing has a lot of memory fourteen megabytes upgraded from six and the standard laserjet four only comes with two so as far as i'm concerned i've got quite a bit of memory so I've gone ahead and turned it on because uh, I did try printing out a page once. It was a PowerPoint slide with a few images printed as a test page and uh, I got the page overrun error. Uh, I turned this on and I no longer got the page overrun error but the it still screwed up printing. It just printed a garbled mess. <laughs> so uh, I guess it doesn't like PowerPoint slides with a lot of big images on them. Oh well, but uh, it's there nonetheless. Resolution, 300 or 600 dpi, you can set that if you wish. Probably the biggest reason you'd want to choose 300 over 600 dpi is that 600 dpi uses as much as quadruple the memory of 300 dpi. So uh, if you find you're running out of memory and you're not printing any images that are going to suffer by being printed at lower uh, resolution, switching to the lower resolution will more often than not save you a lot of memory enough that the printer can process the job. Pretty interesting, back at a time when printer memory was a thing that you actually had to be concerned about, it's not a problem at all anymore. I think now when you buy a printer, I think the lowest uh, laser printer comes with is like 128 megabytes of RAM. So uh, it's kind of interesting, this printer was made in another era, an era when you had to shell out a lot of money to upgrade memory in your printer. Personality, that means which printing language to use. Normally, you know, you'd only have one option, PCL, but because this has PostScript installed, I can also choose PostScript if I want. So by default, I can set it to print using PCL or PostScript. I just have it set to automatic. The printer will choose whatever language based on what it's being asked to print. Timeout is basically how long the printer will wait for the machine to finish sending a print job to it. If, if uh, the machine initiates a print job, but within 15 seconds it, it's still, you know, telling the printer that it's sending data to it, the printer will assume that the computer or whatever machine has crashed and uh, the printer will just time out. You can adjust this from, I believe, 5 to 300 seconds with 15 being the default. And that's the job menu. Next is the configuration menu. Now I've gone through the manual and I'm not certain that I know 100% what this setting does, but I will tell you what I believe based on what I've read it does. Basically with this setting you can choose whether or not the multi-purpose tray is treated as a second paper cassette. Uh, you've got three settings here I think. Whoops. Yeah, three settings. First, manual and cassette. I believe with first, the printer will use the multi-purpose tray if, either in software or on the user interface, you choose a paper size, anything other than letter. Because, of course, the cassette can only handle letter size paper, or A4, if you're uh, 
if, uh, if you're in Europe. And that's, this is the default option, so that's how it does F. So for example, if I sent a print job that specified legal size paper, the printer would tell me on the display to insert a legal page into the cassette. It might say MP load legal, in fact. Oops, I keep doing that. The next setting is manual, and I guess with manual, the multi-purpose tray just purely acts as a manual feed tray. It doesn't, uh, it never uses it unless you insert something into it. And then, gosh, I've done that every time. The final setting is cassette, which means the printer always expects paper to be in the multi-purpose tray. If the multi-purpose tray runs out of paper, the message MP load whatever will show up on the display. So if you have, uh, if you have, for example, letter-sized paper in both the multi-purpose tray, it can hold 100 pages of paper, and the cassette, and you send a print job to it, and the settings are set so that it uh, prioritizes the multi-purpose tray over the cassette, it'll take paper from the multi-purpose tray instead of the cassette. I have no idea what this setting does, and all the manual says, here, I'll quote it from the manual. The, the, the official HP LaserJet 4 service manual says, quote, indicates a transient condition. So there you go. Your settings are on and job. I have no freaking clue what it does. Auto continue. If some error stops the printer from printing, off is the default and it will not continue printing until you press shift continue. If it's turned on, the printer will wait 10 seconds and then continue automatically. Density. This is basically your quality setting. How much toner the printer uses. Settings are between 1 and 5. 3 is default. Uh, the higher the number, the darker the print and the more toner you use. Low toner, on or off. This sets whether or not the printer will continue printing after it senses that the toner is low. It'll, it'll keep on going if the setting is turned on. If the setting is turned off, once the printer detects low toner, it'll cease printing. And that's the configuration menu. Next is the parallel menu. This just has parallel port communication settings, high speed, advanced functions, and that's it for the parallel menu. Serial menu, what standard, RS-232 or 422. The pacing, you have that or that. Basically it's the flow control, either hardware or software. The speed of the parallel port and whether pin 20 of the parallel port is low or high. <laughs> where you should choose one or the other, I have no idea. But high is the default. And that's the serial menu. Test menu. Hey, this is where we print all our test pages. We can do a self-test page, which gives us all our technical information, what menu settings we have, how many pages we've printed, and it gives us the RET calibration block as well. Continuous self-test, which is the same thing, and except it never stops. It's supposed to stop, stop printing once you either turn the machine online or press shift and continue, but I've never gotten it to be able to stop with either of those. I have to turn the, the printer right off and turn it back on. PCL type list, this is a list of the built-in fonts. PCL demo page. Our postscript configuration page, we only get this if we have a postscript module installed. Our postscript typeface list, so even the postscript module has its own list of fonts. I don't think there are very many that the PCL doesn't have, but it does have its own font. And our PostScript demo page, we have all separate test pages for PostScript, which is nice, and that's the test menu. So without further ado, let's print some test pages. This is where I introduce the biggest standard feature that the 4M has over the 4, and that is Adobe PostScript printing support. This is a PostScript module. Now what is PostScript? Well